Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. A logical and a systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSAR net. Module 7, Organic Chemistry. Module 7, Organic Reactive Intermediates, Generation, Stability and Reactivity of Radicals. I am Professor Balaji, currently working at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayam Prabha, MHRD, New Delhi. In this particular unit, we will be looking at the stability and reactivity of free radicals. Let us look at the workout problem. The following reaction goes through here a reaction is given, a silver ester is getting converted to a halo derivative. The following reaction goes through four different uh, intermediates are given. The one is a free radical intermediate, another one is a carbanion intermediate, third one is carbocation intermediate and uh, fourth one is a carbene intermediate. This question was asked in June 2015. We are going to look at how to solve this problem. So, let us look at uh, the first one here. This is the silver salt of the carboxylic acid and uh, this reacts with uh, bromine at a molecule to give a unstable intermediate as shown here. This is the unstable intermediate. Here the silver salt, the silver is replaced by one of the bromine atom and we end up with the silver Br as a precipitate in this particular reaction. So, that is the driving force for the formation of this unstable intermediate and once the intermediate is formed, then this intermediate undergoes a thermal decarboxylation. During the thermal decarboxylation, there is a homolytic cleavage of this particular bond which gives a oxy radical and this oxy radical undergoes thermal decarboxylation that is loss of CO2 happens and we end up with a alkyl radical. And in the first step, we are seeing a bromine radical that is liberated. So, the liberated bromine radical now reacts with the alkyl radical to give the alkyl halide. So, this reaction is called as a Hunsticker reaction, Hunsticker decarboxylation reaction. So, here this reaction involves a homolysis of C C bond. So, that means this homolysis is generally a free radical. So, here we have a free radical intermediate in this reaction. And if you look at the starting material under the end product, there is a one fewer number of carbon atoms from the starting material. So, there is a loss of one carbon from the starting material. So, this reaction proceeds via a radical intermediate. So, let us move on to the next problem. In this workout problem, we are going to find out what is the major product that is formed in the following reaction. Here we have a acenaphthene is given. This is reacted with the NBS, two equivalents of NBS is used as a reagent in the presence of a photochemical condition and uh, carbon tetrachloride is the solvent used and uh, this reaction is a thermal reaction that is uh, it is heated. And uh, there are four products that are given A, B, C and D. We are going to find out what is the product that is formed in this reaction. So, this question is asked in June 2017. So, let us start with the reaction. So, here in the first step we are actually going to look at a radical formation. NBS is nothing but N bromo succinamide and uh, the commercially available N bromo succinamide contains a trace amount of HBr. So, this is a very crucial thing because NBR as such, uh, NBS as such does not undergo any reaction, but the presence of a trace amount of HBr in that uh, NBS uh, reagent is responsible for the initiation of our reaction. So, this HBr reacts with uh, NBR, NBS to give a bromine molecule. This bromine molecule under photochemical conditions undergoes radical homolysis or radical generation. So, we end up with a bromine radical that is formed in this particular reaction. So, this reaction, this bromine radical will now react with the acenaphthene that is given here 
and there are various places the reaction can happen. One may be in the cyclopentane uh, ring system or another one may be in the aromatic ring system. So, we are going to see where the reaction actually happens or occurs. And we know NBS is mainly used for allylic and benzylic bromination. So, we can expect uh, the halogenation to take place at the benzylic position in this molecule. So, we will continue with the reactions of the bromine radical. So, the bromine radical abstracts one of the benzylic hydrogen atom. So, as shown here. So, there is a homolytic cleavage of this particular bond and this uh, cleavage of this benzylic uh, hydrogen bond leads to the carbon radical formation. So, the acenaphthene first uh, loses a hydrogen uh, radical to give the uh, carbon radical as shown here and this carbon radical will then react with the bromine radical which is present earlier. The bromine molecule is broken down in the presence of a photolytic condition. So, a homolytic cleavage of this one and the alkyl radical both gives the corresponding bromo derivative. So, this is the first step and this part of the one bromine atom is broken down as a bromine radical. So, this is the our first intermediate and uh, since we are using two equivalents of uh, NBS, the second molecule also reacts and uh, which gives, which abstracts the second benzylic hydrogen atom. So, there are two benzylic hydrogen atoms present in this molecule. So, the first one is replaced by the first bromine atom and the second one is now being replaced by the second bromine radical. So, this reaction continues and we end up with the final product which is having the dibromo derivative. So, if you look at uh, the reaction, all these reactions are benzylic bromination reaction. So, the bromine molecule is actually liberated in the NBS reaction. So, NBS generally uh, in these kind of cases gives the bromine molecule, a controlled release of bromine molecule happens when we are doing when we are using NBS as the brominating agent. So, that is the crucial step for this and this bromine molecule undergoes homolytic cleavage under photochemical conditions. So, the first molecule uh, reacts with one of the benzylic uh, radical and the second bromine also bromine molecule here reacts with the second uh, alkyl uh, radical to give the dibromo derivative. So, since if a uh, bromination or the radical addition occurs on the aromatic ring, we will actually end up with the non-aromatic product which is uh, very uh, unlikely even. So, that is the reason the reaction actually occurs only at the both the benzylic positions. So, the moment a bromine atom is added to one of the things, we are not getting the second uh, bromination because this hydrogen is not removed by the bromine radical as in this particular case. So, only the benzylic hydrogens are easily removed. So, that is the driving force for this reaction and we end up with the corresponding dibromo derivative in this case. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, here in the following reaction the ratio of A, B, C is here given and uh, the C14 indicates a labeled carbon atom. So, that means similar to the previous one, here we have a alkene unit and uh, one of the carbon is a labeled carbon here and this undergoes uh, n bromo succinamide uh, mediated reaction that is the bromination reaction and we are also using a radical initiator AIBN is used in this reaction. Uh, in the previous case, we have used the H nu that is basically the uh, photochemical conditions for the homolytic cleavage of bromine-bromine uh, bond. Here, we are using NBS for the same one. So, that means a radical initiated reaction is this one and this reaction is also occurring in a non-polar solvent uh, CCL4 by heating. We have A, B and C, three different products are uh, given here. In one the bromine atom is adjacent to the labeled carbon atom. In other case, the bromine atom is present on the labeled carbon atom. In the other one, the bromine atom is away from the 
labeled carbon atom. So, these are all the three different products that are expected and we are going to find out what is the ratio of this product that is formed in the reaction. So, let us start with uh, the first step. We know NBS is generally used for allylic bromination that is what we have seen so far. So, here we have to find out what are the allylic positions. We have 1, 2, 3 and 4. There are 4 hydrogen atoms present in the allylic position. So, the reaction will obviously take place in the allylic uh, place that means the bromine radical will attack this one. So, we end up with the carbon radical on one of the allylic carbon atom. So, this is adjacent to the double bond. So, this is first case and uh, here as we know the bromine molecule the bromine molecule is uh, broken down and we end up with uh, this undergoes a homolytic cleavage and uh, we get uh, the bond is formed between this alkyl radical and the bromine atom. How we get the alkyl radical we have seen because this uh, hydrogen atom is actually uh, removed by the bromine radical that is present in the first case. So, we end up with the alkyl radical on the carbon which is adjacent to the labeled carbon. So, here the first product what we get is uh, the bromine adds to the carbon uh, that is a labeled carbon that is adjacent to that place the first bromine atom adds. And uh, the other case what can happen is there is a radical here. So, this radical puts one electron between this bond and this also gives another electron to this bond. So, here this actually breaks down this uh, double bond or the alkene breaks down between the labeled carbon and the carbon where the bromine atom is attached. So, the double bond forms here and we end up with the alkyl radical on this particular carbon atom. So, this can also undergo another bromine addition like the previous case. So, we end up with the bromine atom on a carbon that is a labeled carbon. So, we have two products in both the cases the bromine atom is added to the carbon which is adjacent to the labeled carbon. So, we have two type of products or uh, we have two instances where this reaction actually occurs and we also have other type of uh, alkyl allylic hydrogens that can be replaced. So, instead of the top one now we will go for the bottom one. So, here we have one of the hydrogen atom that is being replaced and we end up with the alkyl radical. So, if you look at here in this particular case the carbon 14 labeled carbon and the alkyl uh, radical are separated by a one carbon atom in between. So, this can further undergo bromination like the previous case with the bromine at, uh, molecule to give the corresponding uh, bromo derivative. So, here the bromine is attached to the carbon which is one carbon away from the labeled carbon atom. So, this is one type of the product and this particular intermediate can also undergo a rearrangement of the double bond that means there is one electron from here, one electron from this bond and this polarizes towards the the labeled carbon atom. So, the labeled carbon atom gets the radical and here the bromine can add. So, that means we have two different additional products one in which the bromine is added to a carbon which is one carbon away from the labeled one and another product where the bromine is added to the labeled carbon atom. So, these are all the two other different products. So, now if you look at the number of distribution or the ratio of the product that may be formed. We have two products which are having the bromine atom adjacent on the labeled carbon atom that is one set of product and we also have two other one is to one ratio products where the bromine atom is present uh, away or on the uh, labeled carbon atom. So, if you look at what is going to be the ratio of the product that is formed then we see it is the two is to one is to one ratio of the product that is formed. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, in this problem 
we are going to find out the major product that is formed in the following reaction. This question is asked in June 2016. So, here we have a nitrite compound. So, this nitrite compound is exposed to H nu that means under photochemical conditions, four different products are given. So, we have the nitroso derivatives uh, formed in all the cases, uh, hydroxy nitroso uh, derivatives are formed. We are going to find out what is the product that will be formed when this uh, nitrate ester is exposed to photochemical conditions. So, let us uh, look at how the reaction actually uh, will move. So, the first step is under the photolytic conditions, the nitrate ester basically undergoes homolytic cleavage and this gives a oxy radical and a nitric oxide. So, if you look at uh, this bond is broken homolytically. So, one of the uh, bonded electron is taken by the oxygen and another one is given to the nitrogen atom. So, we end up with the nitric oxide as one of the units. So, nitric oxide is basically a radical species and we also have the oxy radical that is formed. So, once the oxy radical is formed, what is the next step? So, this oxy radical actually abstracts a hydrogen atom from this molecule. So, we are going to look at because there are plenty of hydrogen atoms throughout the molecule, but um, the preferred formation of a 6 member transition state. If you look at in this particular case, we have a hydrogen atom which is properly positioned like if we, if there is a bond that is formed here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the 6. So, there is a 6 membered transition state is possible in this particular case. So, the oxy radical abstracts a hydrogen atom that is present exactly at the uh, position where a 6 membered ring can be formed. So, this leads to the transformation of this hydrogen atom being captured by the oxy radical to give the hydroxy derivative which results in the formation of an alkyl radical. So, uh, we already know in the first step there is a nitric oxide molecule that is liberated that is a radical that is liberated in the initial step. We have a alkyl radical here. So, you obviously know what is going to be the next step. So, this nitric oxide radical adds to this particular carbon atom and we end up with the nitroso octanol. So, if you look at the number of carbon atoms present here, we have 8 carbon atoms are present. So, it is an octanol derivative and in the fourth position, the nitroso group is present 1, 2, 3 and 4. In the fourth carbon, we have the nitroso group. So, this compound is nothing but the nitroso octanol and this reaction is called as a Barton reaction. So, here again the intermediate involved is the nitric oxide or the radical. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, in this problem we are going to find out the correct combination of the reagents that is required to effect the following converse conversion. So, this question is asked in June 2014. So, we have a diester. This gives a keto alcohol. So, this is the conversion that is happening and we are going to find out what is the reagent that will uh, be useful or that can be used for this particular transformation. So, we have four combinations, uh, different combinations are given. In A, we have sodium, silene, trimethyl, silyl chloride and uh, heating that is the condition number 1 and in the second condition that is the second step, we have a acidic water workup. So, these are all the two uh, steps involved in the first uh, combination. In the second one, we have sodium, xylene and heating. And in the second step, we have hydrogen peroxide and sodium hydroxide. So, that uh, reagent combinations are given. And in the third set, we have sodium ethoxide and ethanol in the first step and the sodium silene and heating in the second step. And in the last combination, we have TaCl3, zinc copper coupled, trimethyl silyl chloride and uh, heating. And in the last step, we have a hydrolysis uh, under acidic condition. So, these are all the four different combinations that are given. And before we uh, move into how to solve the problem, let us look at what are the roles of the each reagents that are given here. So, the first reagent is sodium. So, sodium is generally involved in the single electron transfer reduction uh, reactions or basically reduction reactions. And uh, if you look at the second one, second one is a hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is a very strong oxidizing agent 
uh, this is used in the second combination the second uh, step and the sodium ethoxide is a strong base and uh, if you look at the fourth reagent that is used uh, titanium uh, trichloride and uh, zinc copper coupled this is basically called as a mercury coupling reagent and this is generally used for mercury coupling reactions and uh, what is a mercury coupling reaction is simple but uh, a combination of two ketones and aldehyde to give a alkene so this is the reaction for mercury coupling so these are all the four different reagents that are uh, given and we have to find out which reagent will carry out the uh, shown uh, transformation so, if you look at the product, the product is missing the alkoxy unit because in the starting material we have an ester. So, that means we have the O R prime or here in this particular case we have the methyl ester. So, this uh, alkoxy the methoxy unit is missing in the final product. So, that is one thing we have to keep in mind. And uh, if you look at the base, uh, sodium ethoxide is a base, we can also think of uh, using a self condensation either intramolecular or intermolecular and if you look at the intramolecular condensation the strong base can abstract the acidic proton. So, here is the acidic proton that is present. So, this acidic proton can be removed by the uh, strong base sodium ethoxide. So, we have an anion this anion can actually attack the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, but if it attacks this carbon we only have 1, 2, 3. So, we can end up only with a 3 membered ring which is quite unlikely. So, that means sodium ethoxide cannot be used for this particular transformation that is ruled out. And if you look at the titanium trichloride that is generally used for ketones and aldehyde. So, we do not have a ketone or aldehyde, we only have an ester. So, that means the titanium uh, trichloride and zinc copper couple that is the mercury reagent is also cannot be used for this particular transformation. So, these two are uh, ruled out. And if you look at the hydrogen peroxide that is a very strong uh, oxidizing agent unless we have some intermediate because we have a reduced unit that is the alcohol is present. So, when we use hydrogen peroxide uh, the stability of our hydroxy groups are going to be very difficult. So, that means hydrogen peroxide is a questionable reagent uh, which can be used. So, what uh, we are left out is we are only left out with sodium. So, we have to see now whether can sodium be used for this particular transformation. So, as I mentioned mercury coupling is only used for ketones or aldehydes, but not on esters. So, let us look at uh, how sodium will affect the following transformation. So, we know sodium has 1s electron. So, that is what we have seen like I mean it can be used for a single electron transfer reactions. So, how the single electron transfer will take place? The sodium will transfer one of the electron to the carbonyl carbon and uh, this double bonded uh, one of the double bonded uh, electrons will be taken by the oxygen because oxygen is more electron, electron negative. So, this will take away the bonded electron towards itself. Now, since one uh, uh, one electron is added from sodium we end up with a carbon radical as shown here. So, similarly the second molecule of uh, sodium will also react and this particular carbonyl uh, carbon to give the second radical. So, first two radical is generated at the top carbon, second radical is generated at the second carbon. So, we have two radicals that is formed. So, you obviously know two radicals when they are in close proximity they can easily form a bond. So, that is what actually happens in the next step. So, the carbon radicals undergo intramolecular bond formation. So, these two single radicals form the bond between these two carbon atoms. So, we end up with the C C bond formation as shown here. So, this carbon will have the O minus uh, oxygen uh, oxide anion will be there and O methoxy is also present. Similarly, the second carbon also O minus and O M E are present. So, we know there are a couple of negative charges present here. So, O M E is a good leaving group. So, you can obviously expect that uh, these methoxy groups can be lost very easily. So, the charge reversal or the negative charge which uh, comes between the oxygen and carbon leads to the dicarbonyl compound as shown here with the concomitant loss of methoxy units. So, two methoxy units are lost. So, we end up with the diketo compound or the dicarbonyl derivative. So, now as we have seen in the case of esters the same type of reaction will also happen on this particular carbonyl carbon. So, 
uh, two sodium atoms will transfer one electron to this carbonyl carbon and uh, we end up with the oxide uh, anions as uh, we have seen in the previous earlier cases. So, we end up with the di radical. So, when we have the di radical you obviously know these two radical can again form one more bond. So, that means we end up with the alkenic bond. So, starting from the diester we are now ending with the alkenic bond and this oxide uh, is basically hydrolyzed. If you look at uh, what is the next step. So, the first step we are using sodium, silane and heating and in the second step we are doing basically the acidic workup. So, under acidic conditions what will happen? This uh, anions will be protonated. So, what we end up with? We will end up with the corresponding hydroxy derivative. So, we get the diol derivative as our product. But uh, you know the diol with an ene is going to be quite unstable. So, this basically undergoes tautomerization reaction and we end up with uh, one of the bond is shifted. So, that means one of the hydrogen is shifted from one oxygen to carbon atom here. So, that is how the tautomerization or the movement of hydrogen atom takes place. So, So, this uh, finally uh, gives our uh, product as the keto alcohol. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, here we are uh, there is a compound is given here the structure of the tricyclic compound formed in the following two step sequences. So, here A, B, C, D 4 compounds are given and uh, starting material is a bicyclic compound and uh, this bicyclic compound undergoes couple of reactions to give the tricyclic compound. So, we are going to find out how the uh, reactions actually proceeds. So, uh, which is actually going to be the final product that is what we are going to find out and uh, this question was asked in June 2012 and here again uh, the reagents given us NBS, two equivalent of NBS is uh, given and benzoyl peroxide is used. So, which is another uh, radical initiator uh, under thermal condition the reaction is carried out and in the second step we have aqueous sodium hydroxide. So, this is a two step process and we are going to find out how the reaction actually proceeds. So, uh, let us look at uh, how the reaction actually proceeds. So, in the first step as we know so NBS are the N bromo succinamide is used in two equivalents in the presence of benzoyl peroxide. So, this is a radical reaction and we already know this is a good uh, NBS is a very good reagent for benzoylic bromination and we have two benzoylic positions on this particular molecule. So, that means two equivalent of NBS will give the corresponding bromo derivative this mechanism we already know. So, that is the reason we are not going to go into detail of how the reaction actually proceeds. So, we end up with the corresponding bromo derivative the di bromo derivative is formed and once the di bromo derivative is formed the next step is basically the sodium hydroxide is used in the reaction. So, that actually replaces one of the bromine atom by the hydroxy unit. So, that means nothing but a SN2 that is nucleophilic bimolecular uh, substitution reaction occurs on this particular benzylic bromine and we end up with one of the bromine being replaced by the hydroxy derivative. So, that is what we end up with the bromo alcohol as shown here and in the next step we are still using another uh, equivalent of uh, sodium hydroxide. So, there is an acidic uh, uh, hydrogen atom on this uh, benzyl alcohol. So, we end up with a corresponding oxide anion. So, that oxide anion once it is formed we already know this can intramolecularly attack this benzylic bromine and that leads to the cyclic ether as given here a 5 member cyclic ether is formed here. So, in this particular case the initial step is uh, by the radical bromination of the benzylic uh, units here these are all the methyl units. So, that position is the benzylic position. So, we end up with the corresponding tricyclo derivative which is a ether.